So hello and welcome. So hello and welcome to everyone to probably the first tutorial session for this course on introduction to biostatistics. Uh, I am Amir. I am a PhD student at uh, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. I for my PhD I study I, I work in the field of ecology. And I study behavior of crickets. Crickets are these little insects that call mostly during dusk, sort of like about now. Yeah, that's what I study. So I'll be your TA, one of your TAs for this course. And I'll help you guide you through this course whenever you have doubts. OK, now can someone tell me what where you are in this course? I mean, what have you uh, learned so far? Anyone? You can just like speak up because there are not a lot of people in this class. So we, you can speak up by unmuting and speak one at a time. Yeah, that'll be great. Anyone? I hope everyone can hear me. Is that okay? Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Jogeshwar. Yeah. Can you tell me? What have you covered so far? So we have covered uh, mean, median, mode, uh, geometric mean, arithmetic mean, and uh, jet score. Okay. Standard mean error. Okay. Standard mean error. Okay. Before we actually, that, that, that's great. That's great. So yeah, that's sort of mostly what you have covered. Basically, some description of data. Data uh, like you have data that is distributed in space in, in on, on an X and Y axis and you have different metrics to understand how the data looks like. Like for example, the standard deviation tells you how widely spread your data is, mean tells you, uh, mean is actually not a very good statistic but it tells you where some most of the weight lies in your data, where uh, some points are like if you add the weight of all data, where would you find the weight to be concentrated? The, like the center of gravity. Then you have the more, the median. Median tells you what where your 50% of your data lies or something like that. Yeah? More tells you where your data is heavily concentrated. And then a lot, lots of other things. So before we go into that, why do we do statistics? Anyone? I mean, just your thoughts. Why do we do statistics? Why do it? Why learn this subject at all? Anyway, it's just a. Uh, it, it'd be nice if people just speak up uh, and have a can have a conversation, and the class will go better if we do that. Why do statistics? Uh, to find out something meaningful. Get the information. One at a time. One at a time. So Anuja, you went first. Yes. Okay. Maybe if there are, you can. I, I can't see your hands raised when you do that. So maybe yeah, one at a time. We just follow that rule. Anuja Kalra. Yes. Uh, can, you, so, can you just uh, start, talk a bit about yourself before you go on to yeah, tell me? Okay, uh, I'm Anuja Karra. I'm also a PhD scholar. Yes. So I'm working on wastewater treatment Okay. from uh, IP University, Delhi. Okay. Uh, so usually uh, when we, uh, in research field basically, when uh, we uh, do some experiments, we uh, get... Uh, a large amount of data. So uh, to find out something meaningful from that data, uh, we apply statistics. Yes, yes. That is more or less what statistics is. So having done statistics for some time, what I think statistics is, is like you said, you go out, you go out in, into nature. What do we do science for? We try and understand nature, right? Anything to do with nature, physics, chemistry, some, some something about nature. When you go out and collect data, whatever kind of data it is, it comes out in numbers. Okay. Now, our human mind cannot actually make sense of these numbers very well. Okay. So, what we have done, we are very smart. Uh, we are a smart species, I would say, in some sense. And what we have done, we have invented, we have sort of seen, okay, numbers for quite a lot of time, for maybe 3,000 years or so. And then slowly people started trying to make sense of this data. And that's how statistics came about. Wherein, okay, you have a set of numbers and how do you make sense of it? So then people started very late, I mean, very recently, people started plotting data on Euclidean space. Euclid was the person who came up with the X and Y coordinates. 
see it's called Euclidean mm -hmm. space, you plot data. And then people thought, like, okay, we can characterize this data in certain ways, like mean or median and more and things like that. And by doing these things, we were try able to understand something about nature itself. Okay, So statistics is a tool which we humans use to simplify and understand nature. Okay, It's not always correct. It has its own flaws and actually can be used. Uh, it, yeah, it has a lot of flaws, but it's always everything is an evolving field and statistics will get better with time and which will also help us do better research. So that's why uh, we do we do statistics just to understand nature. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Any other thoughts on why we do statistics? Anything else? Yeah. Uh, sir, that deal with the data. Anjali. Yes. Relating. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, My yes, name yes. is Anjali Irwai, and I am from B Farm, okay. fourth year. Okay. And sir, uh, biostatistics is directly de uh, deal with data. Yes. Uh, who related with the living organism? Anything, anything. It could be a biostatistics. It's actually statistics only. Biostatistics is just this course, but in broad sense, there's nothing called biostatistics. It's just statistics. Okay? And it could be to okay. any kind of numbers. Okay, not not nothing to do with biology itself. Okay? <laughs> Physics people use it. Economic people use it. Uh, people who do advertisements, like what, which advertisement to put when, they use statistics. Okay? When are we watching TV the most? For all these things, you need statistics to understand nature. Okay? okay. So let's move on. Um, so I, I, I believe you have done two weeks of uh, thing, and uh, I'll just walk you. So there are some questions uh, which sort of. Uh, cover the syllabus, okay, in some sense, over the, what you have done over the two weeks. I, I'll go through that. And apart from that, if you are, during, when we're doing these questions also, please feel free to jump in and share your thoughts, doubts, queries, or whatever. And also, uh, anything to, to do with the course itself, like, not the administration part of the course, but the conceptual part of the course, like, if you don't understand something or something like that, please let me know, and I'll try and address your doubts. So with that, uh, we'll just start off with a PPT. Okay, so let's go on to the first question since a lot of people talked about modes and medians. So there's this question which says the difference between, what is the difference? So this is a data set. The data set is given within this uh, parentheses, lower bracket that is. Set of numbers, okay? And you're asked what is the difference between the two modes of the data set? No, are there, how many modes are there in this data set? Tell me, are there two modes or more modes? How many modes are, are there? And what are the modes? Anyone? Tell me what a mode is first. What is a mode? Repetitive of the data set. Just repetition and everything is a mode here. Is uh, one and two and three, everything is repeated here. Is, uh, are all these modes? Maximum frequency. Yes. Yeah, maximum frequency of yes. any data. Yeah, so remember when I told you what mode is, it, it tells you where your data is concentrated the most. Okay? It could, it could be concentrated the most in many different places also. For example, here, you have three ones, three sixes, and then everything else is two or lesser. Okay? So the maximum frequency, the most amount of weight that is there in this data is at one and six. Okay? So these are modes. So what are the two modes here? one and six okay did everyone get that why these two are the modes because they're the most frequently occurring element yes anyone someone was Sir, you shared the ppt i've not shared the ppt i'll share it to you after the class okay. just concentrate on what we are doing now it is not visible about which data set you oh, okay okay i'm not sharing my screen is it okay okay sorry i'm so sorry no, no sir okay okay yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's my first week as well, and uh, so data set can be unimodal, no modal, bimodal. Anything, anything can it could possible. be. Yeah, yeah. It could be. No, no, there could, there may not be a mode at all. Everything could be equally distributed. Like all elements could occur equally. Okay. So mode does not always have to be there. Remember that. But if it's there, it tells you something where the data is uh, concentrated. 
okay so this is your data set sorry i didn't share this okay you have three ones two twos two threes three sixes and two fours so your modes three ones occur three times sixes occur three times the other things occur two times or lesser actually everything occurs two times so your modes are one and six so what is the difference what the question is what is the difference between the modes what is the difference yeah anyone what is the difference between the modes you have two modes what is the difference 6 minus 1 no yes sir 5 yeah that is the difficult part is not the difference calculate and difference they are asking you try and find where the modes are that's the question actually this is just an auxiliary thing calculate the difference between the modes okay so yeah everyone clear with this question I, i i need to hear at least one yes for me to yes sir okay and if there is a no then we stop and we discuss okay the next question is which parameter can be chosen to determine the spread of your data what do you mean by spread of your data just this term what do you mean by spread of data deviation it is Oh, it is it's from the mean yeah what i'm asking you is spread of your data yeah so i told you like how when we can plot data on an x and y coordinate right yeah and when you plot a lot of points they spread out in space standard deviation for this yes yes you you do your standard that's one measure of spread of your data that's not the only you can also use range Okay, there are different measures of spread of your data. But what I'm trying to tell you is, when you plot data, it's spread in space, right? And there are different ways of measuring it. One is the standard deviation. Okay, did everyone get that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, you need to know the formula for standard deviation. Anyone can? Can you just tell me orally what the formula was for standard? Or just tell me in simple math. Over x minus x bar. Whole square by n minus one for sample yes. and by n for the population. Yes. Yes. Okay. Don't go too deep into what is population mean and sample mean. We usually just use the sample mean. Okay. We because very hard to calculate. You said by root of variance, right? Yes. Okay. So if people coming from algebra, it's the expectation of x minus x bar the whole square. It's the second moment. If you do linear. Algebra, not linear algebra. Probability and statistics is of course it's the second moment of a distribution. Okay. Okay, but let's let's not go there. It's just standard deviation is known is is one of the measures in, by which you can measure the spread of your data. The next question is what is the range of the given data set? You have the set of numbers. What do you mean by range? Anyone? Can you tell me? I was just telling you something about range. Highest number minus highest number. Sir, eighty. Sorry. 80 sir 80 no don't tell me the answer don't tell me the answer difference between highest and lowest yes answer anyone the one bunch you know the method answer you can you can just calculate but yeah so here its range is also a measure of the spread of your data it's the maximum minus minimum value what is the maximum value you heard yeah anyone what is the maximum value on this data set No, not 22. Not 22. Okay, and uh, what is the minimum? 22. 22. 22. So what is 102? My math is bad. So what 80. is that? 80. That's right. Okay, so that's your answer. Okay, so range is nothing but max minus min. That's the important uh, part here. The next thing is given a data set. This is not printed properly, but yeah. If you represent this thing as a pie chart. What percentage of the pie chart will be occupied by seven? Yes. Sir, twenty-five. By seven, seventy-five percent. Sir, twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yes, yes. So if you see, pie chart is basically a two D representation in a circular form of what kind of numbers occupy how much of your data. Okay. For example, one there are three ones, three twos, three threes, and three sevens. So each one of them. Con contributes to twenty five percent of this entire data set. Okay, so seven is also like three times. So three divided by the entire. So, uh, so the percentage here will be 
3 divided by the size of the uh, entire data set which is 12. 3 by 12 is nothing but uh, 25. Okay. Is every is that clear? Yes, sir. All this is simple, but yeah, let's. Pie charts are also good sometimes, not always useful, but they're good because remember, why do we do okay? Let me ask you a question. Why do we do graphs? Why do we plot everything? Why do we have pie charts, bar graphs, scatter plots, line plots, everything? Why? Again, just a little bit of philosophy. Why? Why did Euclidean never? Why is it so useful to just plot something? Why did Euclid come up with his Euclidean space? That is x and y coordinates. Why? It's easy to see. Yes, yes, yes. So we as humans are not actually trained to uh, get at numbers very well. Okay, that's why we have invented statistics also. We really don't. It's not very easy for most of us to understand numbers as they are. Like if I just give you this one, two, three, seven in this form, it's very hard to actually get anything out of it. But when we plot stuff, we are very good. Okay, we start making sense of things that even computers can't make sense of sometimes. Okay, so that's why uh, we do plots. Okay, that's great. Question six: Given the data set, what is the Difference between the magnitude of magnitude difference, that's just the absolute value between the mean and the median. What is the mean here? Anyone? How do you calculate mean? How do you calculate mean? Summation of the, to the total and divided by the total number. So it's the sum of all elements, okay, divided by number of elements of a set, okay. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes. So can someone just add yes. every, everything and tell me what this adds up to? Quickly. Seven, I think, I don't know. Seven. Oh, seven point eight. Huh? Sorry? Seven point eight. 74 divided by how many elements? 10. 10. So that is, is that okay? 7.4. Yeah. Did everyone get this? Did everyone, no, not the answer, the concept, just the. So don't worry about the calculations. Go and do the calculations. The questions will vary. And don't worry about questions themselves. Worry about how when you see your own data, what you're going to do, how you're going to calculate. It's always, so this course is help, is designed to help you do your own statistics. Okay? Get better at statistics so that you can analyze your own data. Okay, the next question, the next part is, what is the median? How do you calculate median? N plus 1 by 2. N plus 1 by 2. When is it n by 2 and when is it n plus 1 by 2? For the uh, even numbers, it will be the middle one. Mm -hmm. And the, for the odd number, it will be uh, the n plus 1 by 2. Sorry. Yes. n into the n plus 1 by 2. Yeah, not n into n plus 1 by 2. Is it n into n plus 1 by 2? Um, <laughs> no, just n plus one by two. N into n plus one by two is the uh, it's it's the summation of it's it's the sum of numbers, sum of natural numbers. Yeah, that's very different. Right? Okay. So yeah, so n by two is for even. N plus one by two is for odd. So that will tell you. Uh, what your that is a term that is a term that uh, is a median of your whatever set. Okay, so how many elements are there in this ten? Right? How many elements are there? Sorry, how many elements are there? Ten elements. Ten. So what is n by two? Five. 
five. So n by two equals five fifth term. Now what is the fifth term? Is it eight? Yes. So mean minus median is just the absolute value of that. Don't tell me the sign. Just the absolute value. I'll put. I'll. Point six. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so that was the sixth median mean and median. Any doubts on that? Any doubts here? No, sir. Okay, next. Let's let's yeah. go to the next question. How many modes does the data set sir? have? Yeah, sorry. Yes. Uh, sir, we take the average of fifth and sixth term. I think I remember. Sorry. Sir, we take the average of fifth and sixth term. Yeah, we take the average of that. That is eight plus eight by two. Sorry. So if you check the mean, then let me just. I've done this. So it's actually yeah. What what is saying is correct. Median of even numbers. For odd numbers, it is n s term and n n by two plus one s term. Yes, yes. And then it will be like eight plus eight by two. Yeah. So it is n s term and n n n by two plus one s term. Yes, yes, yes. That's for the uh, uh, even numbers. Medium. Yeah. Okay. For odd, it's just n plus one by two. Okay, that term. You know, buddy, one. Yeah. So this is eight plus eight divided by two. Okay. You have to correct the formula first. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. N by two and n plus One n by two plus one. One th term. Oh, how do I write this? One th. It's fifth term plus sixth term. The average of that. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll write average as like this. Okay. So that's eight plus eight by two. Yeah. That's again eight. Okay. Did everyone get this? Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. Yes, sir. How many modes that does this data set have? Does this data set have any modes at all? Yes, sir. Uh, three. Yes, three. What are those? Uh, four, six, eight. Four, four six, 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 and eight. Yeah. Why are so the maximum number of maximum right. most frequently occurring elements are? Someone's uh, mic is on. If it's okay. So Oh, okay, if you're not speaking, we shouldn't be speaking. Ah, I don't know who's mic is on. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So, someone's mic is on. We'll be very gracious of you if you could switch it off if you don't wish to speak. Oh, wait, let me just check. How do I check mic? Okay, it's on. Sorry. Okay, four, six, and eight are your modes. There are three. So how many modes are there? Three modes, because these are the most frequently occurring elements. Next is which of the followings may not exist for a given data set? Oh, we have already done this. Which may not exist among these four things? Which of these may not exist? Mode. 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 Yes. We just have a very flat distribution in which all elements are equally frequently, for which you will not have a mode. 
can tell me can tell someone tell me what is an arithmetic mean and geometric mean yeah sir so all the terms are summation x by n and uh, pi x i raised to power 1 by n that is which is geometric mean and which is arithmetic mean the uh, first former one is arithmetic mean and the latter one is geometric mean so uh, I mean, just to go, I I can show. So, arithmetic mean is the sum of all elements divided by the total number of elements. Whereas, yes, geometric sir. mean is the product of all elements. Yes. And sir. the nth root, where n is the number of elements in your data set, nth root of the uh, product of all your elements. There are different uses yes, of these. Okay. I'll uh, I'll urge you to go read up when we use arithmetic mean and geometric mean and things like that, and someone can enlighten us in next class where these things are. Helpful. Okay. Next is uh, what is the approximate relationship between range and silent division in a normal distribution? Yeah. Sir, it's it's R equals uh, four sigma equal. There's no hard and fast. Sorry. Sir, four S. Yes, four S. Because 4s is like almost 95% of your data okay so most of your data comes in four silent deviations so that's why it's r equals 4s okay yes could you please elaborate yes. on this yes there is, actually there is no uh, direct mathematical way of getting to this answer it just says tells you that okay wh how much is one silent deviation how much of your data gets covered by one silent deviation uh 1.96 no sir 68 and i am asking how much percentage of your data gets covered okay uh, 68.68 percent point is unique point okay. when you do 2s it's 95 uh, 97 97 98 okay so it's yeah. plus so that's plus minus s right if you do both sides if you do go one sine division backwards and one sine division front from the mean Mm -hmm. That is sixty-eight percent data. If you do, right. if you go a little more, one one more s both ways, you get ninety-five percent of your data. So that is nothing but r equals four s. Sort of covers most of your data. Okay. Okay. But there is no exact way of doing this. Actually, your data goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. So your range is infinite for theoretical distributions. For actual, so r equals to four as in case of two S D, right? In, in yeah, I mean don't worry about the two S D part. It's just like this is just a heuristic way of telling you where most of your data lies. Uh, so in case of three S D, it's going to be six S then. Uh, with three S, it will be yeah three.